Hello, welcome back to Caves of Cud. Today is a <clears throat> pretty pretty eventful day for for a couple of reasons. Um, well, okay, so um, I got new glasses. Isn't that's that's fun, right? That's super fun. Um, I uh, I got my second booster shot. I'm feeling a little bit under the weather uh, today, just a little bit. But not, you know, not not super bad. I'm fine. I woke up with a headache, but then then I they took care of the headache, or at least I thought I did. Um, the queen died. That was that was something that happened. Uh, literally moments ago, we're gonna go to um, we're gonna go back to Bethesda Sousa, and we're gonna. I want to have a quick look for like I really am concerned about the alchemist. Oh, well, I, I didn't know that we would go to the closest of the two staircases, but I guess that makes sense, doesn't it? We're gonna go down, still trying to avoid um, making enemies with the trolls. Um, all right, so what I might do is on each floor, I'm gonna use the point of interest um, dialogue screen. Just to just to see if maybe it would automatically tell me about the alchemist. I'm I am concerned the alchemist has died, and you know it's not an uncommon thing. I'm pretty sure they would appear on this floor. Maybe they're in this room and I never found them. Mm, no. No, I think they died. I'm pretty sure they're they like they they would hide around somewhere around here. Maybe even like amongst this kind of acidy goo. Um, you know, it's it's a bummer. Uh, yeah, I think they're dead. I'm just gonna have a look. Keep looking out of pure hope here. No, no, no alchemist. Wonder what that goo is. The, the thing is. Um, Brackish, acidy goo. Um, you know, like, do we, like, really need the alchemist? No, not really. They are super helpful to, to have around for many reasons, but they aren't, like, necessarily, um, necessary. <sighs> that's, that's a pretty redundant sentence. Maybe I am feeling under the weather. Who knows? Uh, okay. Yeah. I think I think we're good. I'm gonna go to eat freehold. I've been going there a lot, but there's a few things I need. I need a few mods. Um, you know, don't mind the cicada in the background. I think they're celebrating something. I don't know what. Um, we're gonna. I want to get some mods, uh, and I also want to get some more bits whenever possible. Um, I I was looking perusing my old. Um, like videos as I was uh, uploading them for YouTube and I noticed that I, I, I gave up the opportunity to buy a lot of AI microcontrollers thinking well they're gonna th those are gonna be very common no BEP does not always have AI microcontrollers kind of sucks that I didn't buy those honestly but and it is what it is um, these are Item causes additional bleeding. We don't need that. I don't know what liquid cooled is. This weapon's fire, rate of fire is increased, but it requires pure water to function when fired. There's a 15% chance that one dram is consumed. That's kind of interesting. I kind of like that. Um, and then uh, high capacity is for um, batteries. I don't think we need that. I did say I, I was going to grab some mods just on the off chance I find Beetles that require them. kind of want to grab this recoiler just out of pure morbid curiosity. Um, we're gonna, I'll sell some of these. I won't sell the one that has oil in it. I guess we have the... Uh, we, we don't need that oil. We've got the gyrocopter to carry oil, don't we? Um, so yeah, we'll sell the combustion cells. I'm sorry I'm doing, uh, like, basically opening this episode up with, uh, you know, spying stuff and inventory management. Uh, I know I, I know this has been a very inventory management heavy run. Uh, that's just kind of the nature of the beast, I'm afraid. Um, you know, 
like I'm trying to make a certain a, a few things happen, like eclipse a bunch of planets in order to uh, properly get some of these achievements and. You know, sometimes it means we uh, we gotta do some stuff that isn't necessarily fun. Do a bit of grind, you know. I should really drink that sun's leg. Is a sentence that you basically only say when you're playing Caves of Cud. Let's uh, learn these data mods, data disk mods, and then let's go ahead uh, and disassemble all of this. I would have thought that it would have done it automatically, but it, it's okay. Um, been having some interesting conversations with people in the comments and uh, you know like I know I'm not always great about answering the comments um, it's a complicated uh, relationship between you know between like recording and more stuff or uh, looking through the comments uh, you know some like I'll, I'll always read them but answering them is not something I always prioritize and I'm sorry about that uh, that's not a, like, a sarcastic sorry, like, I'm not gonna do it. I will do it. I just, uh, I'm not always very good about it. Um, but do know I always read the comments. Um, but yeah, I was having a, some interesting conversations in the comments about, um, like, some of the mechanics of CUD as well as, like, you know, preferences for how, how you play. Um, there's, you know, like, Caves of CUD is a really strange game because it's still technically in that vein of like roguelike um you know very uh optimizable gameplay you know what i mean by that like a, you can you can optimize your play in caves of cud oh we have a oh i think i just sold that literally just sold that i wonder if i can get that back <laughs> i would like to get that back um Actually, yeah, well, let's sell this optical thing because that technically weighs a certain amount. Oh, this, uh, actually, yeah, let's, let's get rid of this, sorry, stabilizer arm. That's perfect because it, it, it weighs five and the rough agate weighs one. I have to do a bit of weight management, you know? Um, yeah, cut is a, is a optimizable game, um, and that can sorry i know my my cuz are really peaking the mic and i'm not sure why um it can like you know lead to i don't know the roguelike equivalent of rules lawyering you know what i mean by that like um rules lawyering is a term oh wait oh i thought it was an ai microcontroller uh rules lawyering is a term that comes up in D D in which um basically you know like no you, you can't do that because the rules say this and um there's a very objective one can say objective way of doing things like yeah i, I know that the rules are clear about this thing and therefore uh, i'm going to you know double down and, and die on this hill like you know from the player's perspective it can get like, you know, I want to get many of the benefits of doing a thing. I'm going to cook a thing here. I want to get all of the benefits of doing a thing. And therefore, um, you know, like, you don't, even though you're the DM and you're you're kind of in control of the game, uh, I, I'm just going to do this. Like, this is, this, I'm in the right here because of the book. The book says so. And so let's try some fire ant gaster paste. I don't think I've ever played played with that. Whenever you use a salve or uber nostrum, you get you gain forty to fifty heat resist for six hours. Interesting. Uh, extra healing healing rate. You can use free, flame flaming ray. I think that's a physical mutation. When you are set on fire, you stop bleeding. That's like cauterizing the wound right there. Um, can you use a flaming ray? Uh, this is fine. So I've that was my 40th recipe. We just have to make 60 more recipes, and then we will have achieved. So um, yeah, rules lawyering is a, is a kind of a problem, and it's one of those things because when you're playing a tabletop game, um, it's it, it feels like a um, a gray area, you know, like where rules shouldn't necessarily dictate 
uh, what you're doing, how much fun you're having, what, you know, what you're doing, like how, how you do things, you know, it's kind of up to the GM or the DM to, um, make a fun and entertaining, uh, game to play. I'm just joining, getting into this, um, historic site to, to do something while I talk about this. All right. Well, this was a mistake. Yeah, there it is. These crocs suck. I just wanted on the record that I hate these crocs. A lot. Okay, I'm not going back to that historic site. I think ever. Um, alright. I don't even know what I was talking about. So, you know, Cud is, a, is an interesting game because it is very nebulous. Like, a lot of, a lot of things in Cud kind of are, are very nonsensical. I'm trying to think of where I want to go. You know what? Let's just do some um, let's do some clam hopping while while I while I talk here. Um, you know, it, but like still, you know, people arrive at certain objective answers about how to do things, and that's totally fine. Um, you know, I I think it's totally fine to arrive at like objective answers for you know problems. Uh, especially in a, you know, in a, in a roguelike. Um, I think it's never okay necessarily to dictate how, uh, how you think other people should play the game. Not that that has necessarily happened to me. And oh my god, I'm having quite a time and could, aren't I? That tongue, that tongue guy, like, hit me from halfway across the map. That was really interesting. Um... So, you know, ha has anyone dictated to me necessarily recently? No. But I, it's still an interesting thing to me because, like, you know, really the, the question came up of can you proselytize a robot? This is something that has come up multiple times as I've recorded CUD because I have often been under the suspicion that you can't proselytize robots. This is a truly Caves of CUD sentence, isn't it? Um, can you proselytize a robot? Should you and can you um, convince a robot to join your cult? Why is this guy cool with me? Huh, weird. It doesn't make sense to me that you should be able to proselytize a robot. Um, but there is there's an answer here. You can proselytize a robot. You can't beguile a robot. Which is such a weird thing to me, like, um, you know. I'm not saying it's wrong at all. I'm saying it's weird. It doesn't really make a lot of sense because, you know, how is it that I can convince a robot to join my cult, but I can't um, use basically a mental mutation? I mean, I guess I answered my own question, didn't I? Didn't I? <laughs> I like, it's just weird. It's weird and I don't like, it, it's one of those weird edge cases where in CUD where it's like, uh, you know, like this makes sense maybe in universe, but to me, it doesn't necessarily make a lot of sense. And that's fine. I, CUD doesn't necessarily have to make sense. I'm, I'm, this is quite a thing that is happening right now. This guy is just like nudging me this aggressively. At least this uh, this frog isn't burrowing a channel in my brain. I am actually damaging this force field. This will be good. This is good practice for when eventually I have to fight a chrome pyramid, because that is an achievement. Okay, okay, you you need to stop. Thank you. So yeah, you end up in these situations where like there's there's a objective answer to some of the problems in cult uh, in cud, and uh, I often forget the edge cases. You know, it's like um, dual wielding, or or wielding shields. Like someone out there understands how shields exactly work. Uh, do you need to wield them, meaning have them in your hand, or do you just need to? Uh, have one on your arm. Some shields can be worn on your arm and some shields um, can only be worn 
on in your hand. A case in point. Am I not using that anymore? What happened to my shield? <laughs> oh, I remember because um, I took the flaming crystal war hammer. That's right. I wonder. No, I don't think it would be worth removing. Like the the crystal mace is the only other weapon I have in hand. And I mean, this short blade doesn't really count. It would almost be worth taking short blades to make it do something. Uh, I don't know. Maybe. maybe. Uh, temporal fugue is off cooldown. This is good because I'm about to get tongued. So, yeah, anyway. Um, for the most part, you know, the Caves of Kid commenters and, and, and community is very chill and I appreciate that um, I, I just like I, I find it bizarre uh, and I mean that's I guess part of the intention with cud is is like what how does this work what, what do you mean you can proselytize a robot but you cannot forcibly enter their brain also you can actually because um, someone was saying like well by the way, the reason this came up is um, I was asking about the clones achievement. This is like the most Caves of Code bullshit, I swear to God. I was asking about the clones achievement. I was like, do your temporal clones count? And do your clones temporal clones count? Because then the achievement would be very easy. But I feel like I've populated, uh, pretty heavily populated a, uh, a, a an area with my clones. And it still, it, it has not really counted. Um, to which the answer was, well, uh, I don't, we don't, you know, <laughs> some people don't know, uh, you know, not necessarily, uh, all of the answers in code are accounted for, or secrets. Um, this is bad. But, um, yeah, uh, it's not known necessarily if the temporal clones count. So, I, I don't know, I'd have to experiment myself. But someone did say uh, a good way of getting that achievement is to proselytize a cloneling. To which I responded, I didn't think you could <laughs> proselytize a robot. Um, and then the topic of the uh, teleprojector, what is it? The ganglionic teleprojector came up. And I had forgotten that that was a toy that you could play with in CUD, which uh, essentially acts as a dominating um, force against robots. You, you treat it basically like domination against robots. And in fact, it's one of the ways you can you can get grafted is uh, if you have the tele, tele, um, ganglionic teleprojector, you can uh, visit the grafter in the bottom left corner of the six day stilt. So not six day stilt, sorry, the salt desert and uh, and then get grafted. It's almost an exploit. And you know, like this topic of exploits has come up quite a lot in CUD. I feel like it's kind of a moot discussion. It really is. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. Like, I, I, this is the other thing I was talking about is daggers. Um, is it exploitative to auto pick up daggers? Um, who cares? I don't know. You know, it really is just like I've received like a comment from like two people regarding making the game easier and how they don't agree with that. And that like completely changes my outlook on like what people want to see. And you know, as a, as a uh, self-proclaimed entertainer, <laughs> scoffs at self, uh, you know, I, I might want to hear people out and, and consider what they actually want from me. What do you want from me? What do you want from me? Um, so when someone says, I can't believe you do this, it just makes the game stupidly easy. Uh, you know, I have to consider that. I have to think about that. It's like, well, is, it, is this actually making the game easier for me? And is that valid? Really, when you talk about exploitation, you're talking about validity. Like, it's such a silly, weird thing. Why are we talking about valid ways of playing the game? I'm... You know, I think it's very easy to just say, well, any way that you play the game that is fun is valid. I think the only way you're not playing the game in a valid way is if you are literally torturing yourself. And 
you know, making it as difficult as possible. Maybe you find pleasure in that, in which case it would then wrap right back around to being valid again, wouldn't it? But, man, like, don't, uh, don't necessarily assume that I'm, I'm going to enjoy it. Um, but like, you know, okay, so, you know, the geomagnetic disc, for instance. I don't, I, maybe I just don't understand how that works. I know it's a good weapon, but like, as I understand it, you have to like throw it and then go and pick it up again and then throw it again and then pick it up again. And I'm like, I don't find that fun at all. Um, so it's like one of those weird edge cases where it's like, maybe there's an objectively correct way of playing this game, but I don't, you know, it's not valid to me really. Whereas I do find it pretty fun after having explored the desert and having my uh, auto pickup knives mod on to then dump all of my daggers off at a, a shack and, and then buy some crystal goods. But yeah, like I understand, you know, someone's like, well, that's just like the automatically get money mod, isn't it? Kinda. But then again, you know, if I went to the trouble of checking every single corpse to make sure they had a dagger and then picking up those daggers, wouldn't that be the same thing? All you're saying is that I can't have a quality of life feature that automatically does that for me. Like, it's, it's, a, it, you know, if I was playing the game exactly optimally, then I would just do that, wouldn't I? I would check every single corpse and pick up every single dagger. And then, uh, you know, no one would be able to complain to me at all. But uh, what a weird thing to want someone to do. Oh, are you kidding me with this croc nonsense? Get out of here. What a weird thing to want someone to torture themselves. And I do f consider it a low form of torture. To, to like, you know, let's check every single... Cor basically want someone to, to you know... Play the game at a lower quality of life. I don't know. How do people even feel about quality of life features? It's a weird thing if I'm, you know, thinking about it. What is a quality of life feature? It just, I guess it means that some of uh, what you might consider to be a chore in a game is uh, negated by an I interface feature. User interface. That's what uh, UI means, right? Or is it user... No, you. I think... Is, is it UI is user interface and then UE? User experience? Can't remember. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Like, you know... Um, if the player is... Sorry, if the game is... Played optimally by doing certain things. And so, therefore, it is kind of assumed of the player... To do those things in order to play optimally and then those things that they're doing to play optimally are not fun like genuinely a chore oh no is there a magnet somewhere there is a magnet somewhere um you know like I just think that uh, at a certain point, you're, uh, what are you, like, what what are you arguing with? And I know I'm like, I'm in basically inventing a guy here and then arguing with him and probably losing. Isn't that nice? Um, but like, you know, for sure, for real, like uh, how, what, when does a feature, what is, when is a quality of feature considered fair game and not an exploit? And that's just like, again, such a weird idea. I guess I just fall under the camp of I don't think I, I just don't subscribe to any of this. I, I think the whole conversation is kind of bizarre and uh, honestly I don't really understand it conceptually at all. <laughs> like um, it's sort of like the uh, you know when we talk about the concept of canon versus non-canon. When does something become canon versus not canon? Well it was canon because it was in the movie. Okay. Uh, does that make the movie more canon the, than the book? No, the book is more canon than the movie. Okay, what about the series? Is the series canon? Or is... No, the book is more canon than the series, but the series is more canon than the movie. 
What? Uh... What is canon? What does that mean? It, does it mean that some part of content in a story is more valid than another? Is that literally all it means? Are we then talking about validity again? We're just talking about validity. This content is valid, and this other content is not valid. Well, here's a unfortunate piece of news is, you know, some unvalid content is considered to be more interesting and more fun than non-valid content. And if we're talking about validity, I, I did start this whole thing by saying, well, uh, isn't it the most valid content the content that you enjoy? Isn't the, the most optimal way to play a game uh, the way that you enjoy it? I would argue that it is. You're welcome to agree with me, but this it falls very neatly under the jurisdiction of uh, subjective. <laughs> you could say objectively there are optimal ways to play a game, but I would say subjectively those ways of playing the game are not very fun and I don't enjoy them. Um, am I saying that your way is less valid? In a way, I guess I am, because it's less valid for me, because I don't enjoy that as much. What are these? Kaleido Sarah Muffs. What are these? Ooh, plus one Ego. Has a 2% chance to refract light-based attacks. Well, it's unfortunate the uh, AV is so bad. Sending them back the way they came, plus or minus up to 880 degrees. That ego is quite nice, and the resistances are super nice, but um, AV kind of bites. I wonder if I got that from a slug. I do remember, these things are called like Kaleido slugs, right? Yeah. I wonder if you get that from butchering a slug corpse. Yes, that is correct. Okay, that answers that question. Anyway, all of this to say that I don't want to use a geomagnetic disc, okay? <laughs> and uh, to the, to the you know, I think it was Uhu. Uh, I, I'm not arguing with you necessarily. I'm, I'm really just kind of thinking the whole thing out. Like, why don't I use the geomagnetic disc? Well, now you have your answer. Why? I'm bleeding, like, really badly. Can I stop bleeding? I, I think I'm gonna die from bleeding. Why am I bleeding so badly? Okay. One of the rare times bandage actually helps. Listen, bandage is very good. Um, saved my life just now, probably. So, um... I find the topic of uh, exploits and canon versus non-canon to be a strangely related um, to topic of conversation because it really just comes down to like, is am I playing the game in a valid way? Eh. Weird. I don't know. What is valid? What is matter? I don't know. <laughs> How does that go again? What is mind? No matter. What is matter? Never mind. There you go. Yes, we are making absolutely ancient Simpsons references today, aren't we? Get back here. I'm not done with you. Radiant shank of Quavum. Oh, that's, uh, that's mine. We getting oh those things hit you pretty hard and you bleed pretty badly from them. Okay, good to know. What are these things called? These are salt dollars, junk dollars. So I am just kind of like clam hopping. I don't really have a, a good idea of like what to do, but it, it's it is inspiring my character so I can you know cook more recipes. Um, choose more stuff. We can find out some more recipes from canned have-it-all. Um, seems to be a good way to just kind of like play around and 
figure things out. We could we use some Galbeard clan paste. I'm not sure what that does. Let's see. Plus four agility can use poison breath at level five. If you already have poison breath, it's enhanced by five levels. Yeah. I think poison's okay. I think one of the reasons... Oh, okay. I don't want to deal with this. Did I actually... Did they actually kill the tinning lamprey? Um... I think one of the reasons I prefer Trukin to uh, mutants is that Trukin overall just have less things to manage. Like, this, most of the cybernetics... Oh no, that tinning lamprey is still very much alive. And also, one of my clones is evil. What? What? What just happened just now? Um, I, I want to jump back through that dollar before uh oh god oh jeez where is the dollar there it is sorry the clam <sighs> that was spicy i do i do want to survive like i've gotten some pretty good stuff i could just head back to eat freehold uh you know what i i think we should do i'm, I'm gonna wrap up the episode pretty soon a lot of i've been saying a lot of things not necessarily all of those things are, you know, useful. I don't have I don't have answers for a lot of the questions I ask, which is, you know, I think while you're playing Caves of Cud, that's like the perfect vehicle for not being able to answer bizarro questions that really don't matter at all. Um, but, you know, I hope that you enjoy it and maybe you have some insight as to uh, this this whole thing and. Uh, I mean, if you just just assume that, like, if you have an opinion regarding uh, <laughs> whether something is valid or invalid, that I am going to just read uh, in front of it. This is my opinion. Um, so, you know, take take that with a grain of salt. I think in the next episode, I'm going to go ahead and do some ruin diving because I haven't done that in a bit. And I don't I'm really kind of like in a, at a loss for things to do right now. Um, like, what are we doing? We're, we're kind of in, in the middle of some uncomfortable things. I need more love injectors if I want to make friends with the trolls. I need a, a ganglionic teleprojector if I want to, like, try and get the clone uh, uh, achievement. I need to find some new villages. I need to get reputation for villages. These are all very grindy things that I, I don't have a, con a lot of control over. So I may as well just do some ruin diving and see what happens. So anyway... If you enjoyed this episode, definitely hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content like this and definitely drop a comment about what you think is valid forms of play uh, as well as what is canonical. Also, Tom Bombadil never happened. All right, see you guys next time.